Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at benzene structure and stability. Now, um, we're going to look at very quickly just the history of benzene. Um, we're then going to look at uh, how benzene is actually structured today and um, the evidence, thermochemical evidence for um, the stability of the molecule as well. So it all started when uh, a scientist called Michael Faraday who um, first discovered benzene and he suggested that this formula was C6H6. Um, however, he didn't know how it was actually structured. Uh, and it wasn't until a little bit later on that a uh, Belgian scientist called Kekulé um, actually did some work on this. And um, the story goes that he uh, supposedly fell asleep in his armchair next to his fire and he started um, dreaming of um, molecules, but he started visualizing them as um, a set of snakes. And he started seeing long chains um, of snakes all forming in rows, uh, some short ones, some large ones. Um, and actually, what the breakthrough moment for him in his dream was actually that one snake started to eat its own tail. And uh, Kekulé noticed this in his dream and he woke up and uh, he actually could, he actually came up with the structure that we have today, uh, or as close as we can get. So, and basically, what he came up with was uh, an idea that you had uh, a cyclic compound, um, so like the one up there, and uh, actually to satisfy the formula that Faraday discovered, which is C6H6, he said that you had to have three double bonds in this molecule. Now, um, this is also known as Kekulé's structure, and because he came up with it, um, and what he actually later proposed um, was that actually um, we had an oscillating um, sequence um, where we have uh, a, the double bonds oscillate between here and here. Um, but there were still a few problems um, later on. It wasn't actually the true structure. Um, and basically one of the things was um, that benzene, because it has, if I call it a calculate structure, if it has double bonds, it should undergo addition reactions. But actually we found out later on that benzene didn't undergo addition reactions um, and it very rarely does. So um, that kind of threw doubt into Kekulé's structure. Um, and also the fact that if we have double and single bonds, our benzene should actually be um, a little bit skewed. It should be um, not symmetrical, in other words, because we have some short bonds and some long bonds. Um, but it wasn't until actually we had some more advanced scientific techniques, such as X-ray diffraction uh, or X-ray um, crystallography, that we managed to find out the, um, that actually the structure of benzene wasn't as Kekulé suggested and it unraveled a few myths. So, um, according to Kekulé's model, like so, we should have a C double bond C and a C single bond C. But actually, when we did some X-ray um, X ray work, uh, we found out that actually it was a symmetrical molecule, which immediately suggested that you couldn't have a double and a single bond uh, system, as Kekulé suggested. Uh, and through infrared radiation, we actually and discovered that actually the bonds were all oscillating at the same frequency. Uh, and because of that, that suggested that actually this benzene had bonds of equal length across the whole molecule. Um, and actually, we actually worked out that the length of the bond of all the bonds in benzene through the X-ray fraction was 140 picometers in length. And all of them were like that. So the only model that could actually fit that was this one here, uh, and this is the new model that we have today, which is a delocalized pi system. Now, effectively, what you've got is six carbons in there, uh, and each carbon has uh, hydrogens. The whole molecule is flat, it's a planar molecule. And you can see here that we've got some um, p orbitals, which are um, left over. So these ones are just free, um, free orbitals, they're where the electrons are not involved in any bonding. Now, what it can do, because of the structure of benzene, is very unique. Um, it can actually delocalize some of these electrons in a bit like of a donut system. So um, I'm going to draw some lines on here just to show what's happening. So you can see I've got my red p orbitals on our carbons. We've got our hydrogens there, which are completely in the plane. Now if I join these up, so if I join the top ones up there, I'm going to do it with a dotted line. So all the top orbitals, which will go along there, there's a one there, there's a one there, there's a one that goes up to the top, and then back round. And you can see that we have this um, delocalized of the electrons of the upper p orbitals, as you can see on here. And I've drawn this on this molecule here in blue as well. And you can see they actually kind of overlap and delocalize their electrons. Uh, and we've also got a lower set as well. 
So I'm going to do this in green. So you can see we've got one there, we've got one going to the bottom there, we've got one going there, one going up there, up to the top, and then back around again. And you can see, again, it's probably shown a bit more clearly in this diagram, where we have a um, delocalized um, electron system at the bottom. So this is what we call delocalization of electrons, uh, and we call it a pi bond or pi system, so delocalized pi system. So, uh, and that's the model that we have today, and that actually um, answers a lot of the problems that Kekele couldn't do at the time about the um, symmetry of benzene uh, and the fact that actually it doesn't undergo um, it doesn't actually undergo addition reactions, and that's because all the bonds are the same length because the electrons are actually spread across the actual molecule. Now, one of the other evidence, uh, one of the key bits of evidence as well, is actually thermochemical evidence. Uh, and this is proof, this is a method in which we can prove that the uh, model was actually a delocalized system. And basically what we say is that we take um, the um, Kekulé's model and we put it through some tests. So if we take something like this one here, which is cyclohexene, you can see we've got a, a one double bond in there. Uh, and if we add hydrogen to it, so this is a, an addition reaction, um, then effectively what we should uh, have, well, we get an entropy value of minus 120 kilojoules per mole. Um, now this suggests that um, the amount of energy given out when the bonds have been formed to make the CH bonds to form your single bond is actually uh, greater than the amount of energy that's needed to break this double bond um, initially. Um, and um, if you're not sure on the uh, bond break and bond forming, um, there is a video that looks into bond entropy. So if you just click on the link below, uh, and you can understand what and where I'm coming from. Now, this is given a value of minus 120 kilojoules per mole. Now, if Kekulé's structure was correct, um, then Kekulé proposed three double bonds, and um, in theory, we should have uh, or a predicted value uh, of three lots of hydrogen. So we need one hydrogen to um, react there, one hydrogen there, and one hydrogen there. Now, in theory, that should be three times 120, which should give us minus 360 kilojoules per mole. Um, but actually, when we did this reaction, um, the actual amount was a lot lower than that. Uh, it was minus 208 kilojoules per mole. Now, this actually suggests that Kekulé's model isn't correct. We can't have three separate double bonds. And what we must have is something that's actually a lot more stable than we thought. Um, and the reason why this value is lower is because the amount of energy needed to um, break the bonds in a, in a delocalized benzene system must be a lot greater than the amount of energy um, that we're actually um, giving out when we're forming the bonds. And because the endothermic part, which is the breaking bonds, is a lot larger, then this effectively reduces our actual value um, of our exothermic value of minus 208. So that actually suggests that benzene is a little bit more stable than we expect and is a strong case for the delocalization um, system, which is over here. So I'm just going to put that on there as well. We'll do that in red. So this suggests that it's actually more stable. Um, and that's because it takes uh, more energy that's because it takes more energy to uh, break uh, the delocalized delocalized pi system. So that's actually quite a, a common question for them to ask in the exam is trying to explain what's happening and you've got to make sure you refer to your uh, the values. Now, you don't need to remember the values but they will give you in the exam so just be aware that you compare it against what Kekulé's would have been, the predicted value, and what it actually is, and make a comment on that difference as well. Uh, and it's because benzene was found to be more stable because of this delocalized system. So um, I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.